Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men Podcast. I'm Steve Hall, joined this week by Dan Club and Sam Walker to talk about the shit show that was the Champions League draw. We've got a bit of Jude Bellingham reaction as well after Liverpool were linked with him and tons, tons more of good Red Men mirth. But before we start all that, lads, firstly, welcome. I'm going to get you warmed up with a couple of kick-off questions. Sometimes on the old kick-off questions, we go non-football related, um, but I picked two footy ones, so therefore we'll stick on, on the theme. Sometimes a lot of people give me stick, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you know why you're talking about these type of things for? Well, yeah, I'm going to go football themed. Won't go too much in these, Dan, I'll come to you first. Then first one's from Box to Box, who says, would you take Genie Wijnaldum back on loan? Now, I'm guessing this means... The reports came out of front that he could be available in, as early as January for yeah. a loan deal for the end of the season. Arsenal were linked with him. Um, all the best, Genie. I don't know why he'd do that. But if the opportunity was there for Liverpool to take him, what, would you would you get him or would you leave? Would you give it a miss? I, I personally would. Yeah, obviously he was a fantastic servant to the club. I don't think anyone appreciated the way it all came to an end. But we're only a few weeks out of being in a bit of a midfield injury crisis. Like things are looking rosy at the minute. We got Thiago, Fabinho, and Henderson playing regularly. That's fantastic. But about three or four weeks ago, we were really scratching around. If you look at the Brighton game, second half in particular, that was a makeshift midfield. So we all know he's durable and he's experienced and he's won the lot with us. So for six months with wages maybe supplemented, definitely, yeah. Sam, I suppose the flip side is when everyone's fit, I think Liverpool's midfield now is better than it was last season. They're certainly more progressive. We're a better attacking team. We're both, you know, they're all... I say both of them, but Henderson and Thiago, who you class as the first choice, are getting on the score sheet a bit. They're a bit more forward thinking than Genie was. The flip side is, like like Dan says, games are about to come thick and fast. January onwards, it, it's not going to stop, especially if Liverpool advance in the Champions League, like we hope they do. Mm. And there, so that, that there's the arguments for and against. And then also is the fact that he left in not like amazing circumstances. I don't think he was particularly thrilled at how it all went. But if, if you know, if if Genie's agent gets on the phone on December thirty first and says. I'd love to come back on loan PSG and let me do it. Can I come back? What, what's your answer there? Personally, I'm never one to sort of go backwards. Like, Robbie Fowler, yeah, all right, fair enough. But like when, when we got Bellamy the second time, I was quite yeah. flabbergasted by that. But, you know, we move forward as a club. We're in a different time now. I, I, I was one of them who was, like, happy to shake his hand in the summer and say, you've been a legend. But I'm, I, I thought his biggest asset is that he's fit. Mm. I, I look at what we're doing now as a team. I've, I've read a few things in the last few days about how we're playing, slightly more 4-2-2-2, slightly more 4-4-2 at times. And I just think that the shape of this team with the kind of midfielders that we've got available to us now is is changing direction from what Genie was about. Um, I would prefer to see him you know, do well at PSG or go somewhere else and, and maintain what he did. I wouldn't want him to come to Liverpool and be 4 4 fifth choice, you know, Harvey Elliott might come back and, and you know blast into the team again and suddenly Genie's on 200 grand a week on the bench or whatever it would be. I don't know, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm more always to the side of thanks but no thanks on that one. I suppose though, Dan, the, the, again, the, you mentioned the injuries there and we've got, I know AFCON's a different position, mm -hmm. but if Liverpool are thinking, well, maybe we're going to use Harvey Elliott as, an, if, as he comes back in January, he becomes a forward yeah. option or Oxley chamberlain becomes a forward option, mm -hmm. then, then you could be, like say, it, you could, you could almost cover Mane and Salah's absence by signing them in the field and pushing one of those up. In that case, it would make a bit more sense. 100%, yeah. And obviously, if Okata into that mix as well, not only is he injury prone, as we've all unfortunately seen, he goes to AFCON as well. Yeah. So, Thiago, unfortunately, absolutely loving to pieces, wonderful footballer, has had injuries as well. So, you know, we don't quite know what's going to happen. And like I touched upon just a few weeks ago, we really were scratching around. So, like we mentioned there, Wijnaldum's always fit. And we get to them last stage of the Champions League, he's dependable, he'll be there. Listen, it's not ideal. I completely understand everything Sam says. I don't like bringing players back, but we know we've got a quality player there who's kind of been wasted in France a little bit. He is. He's been wasted. That, that's the, I suppose we don't want to go too much into it. It's only a kick-off question. But I suppose that's the, the flip side, isn't it? Grass isn't always green, Sam. Maybe he's finding yeah. that out now a little bit. I mean, I, I don't think he wanted PSG either, to be honest. I think I don't think anybody quite realised that much. Barcelona of, yeah. as well, wasn't And I don't think anybody, with, yeah. including him and his agent, realised just how, how, how crazy the messy situation was. Mm. And we can go into that, can't we? But, you know, and then he's ended up there. Listen, if he stays there, he wins a league title, probably a cup. And I still think they're a dangerous threat in the Champions League. Yeah, you know? So... They've got an easy draw. We're going to get on that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, like, but I, I just think for him, he, he, he should... He should 
stay there and force a hand. I mean, he got a late equaliser the other day for them. You know, he's still he's still the 12th or 13th man. And we know what Verratti's like. God, he, he's, he's like Naby Keita over there. He's never fit, is he? No. So I think he probably gets his game. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely see it. If he came in and we, we, we went on and smashed it, won one or two major trophies, oh, he'd be like, amazing. What a, what a, what a turnaround. But I say, it's, it's, it's a personal choice, isn't it? I'll go to the uh, go a few comments in, in the chat. Then. So uh, Perry says, I bring Genie back only if we don't have to play him because sometimes alone you have to agree to certain oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Point. Which is a good point. Um, Trig Josh says maybe having Genie back might upset the plans that we that Klopp and FSG have for signings in January. Again, maybe so. We're going to talk about one of those potentially later as well. And then also, um, Kev Wright kind of agrees with what you say, Sam. He says, as much as I love Genie, I think once a play goes, you shouldn't come back. We should always be looking forward and bringing a player that brings something new to the team rather than looking in the rearview mirror. Right then, next question <laughs> um, from Peter Cinnamon, who's, I think that's how you pronounce that, who says... Do you think Mo Salah can score thirty plus Premier League goals this season, Sam? Mm. Even though he's going to miss games due to the Afcon, so it's a big ask. And he's on. I think it's fourteen. He's on at the moment. So you're looking at sixteen more goals. There's there's plenty of games <sighs> for him to do it in. Again, we don't know exactly how many he's going to miss for Afcon, but it's mad that you could, that's even a conversation. But it it is an actual realistic question. He could still do it. Well, you know, there's only two Premier League games this season when Mo hasn't got a goal and assist. And you'll remember in these games what happened as well. Brighton. Do you remember what happened to Brighton? He scored offside. Side, yeah. Burnley. Same. Man. He scored mm. offside. The yeah. guy is absolute fire right now. And uh, I just think to myself, there's absolutely nothing he can't do. Listen, would you put your money on AFCON being on? Would you put your money on Liverpool going, ah, we've got a couple of COVID cases. We're playing mm. Brentford at home. We'll have that game rescheduled in March yeah, when yeah. the boys are back. <laughs> you know, what's going on now? You just don't know, do you? So... Well, yeah, I'd put money on it. If you said to me, it is 20 quid, put on a bet, I'd bang it on that bet. As it stands, uh, Dan, Liverpool have got 22 Premier League games left at time mm. recording. AFCON, he, depending on how early he goes, yeah. Liverpool still want him to go and play the Chelsea game and then yeah. go, in which case he misses two, maybe three yeah. league games. So let, let's say he's got 18 games left mm. and he needs 16 goals. I mean, the math says he's he's going to get there if he, if he carries on this form, doesn't it? It makes sense. He, he definitely like he got 32 goals, didn't he, in his first yeah. season? Pretty much played every single game there. I think mm -hmm. it was one. It's it's on the cards. Oh, it's massively on the cards. The form he's in right now. If it wasn't for Afcon and potentially missing a few games, you'd almost back into have it done by the end of February. His form is ridiculous, especially when you look at some of the fixtures. The, the more difficult fixes tend to come towards the back end of the season when we play City again and what have you. But between like now and then, obviously we've got Newcastle Thursday. It only takes a couple of hat tricks, which sounds, you know, what I'm almost brushing it off as easy. But it, Just a few, for, few but, Premier League hat tricks. But for, him, <laughs> for him, it seems to be the case, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? The man's ridiculous. Obviously he's on penalties as well, which helps. Yeah, it does. But the man's ridiculous. He's scoring all kinds of goals, so there's absolutely no reason. And when you throw into his assists in the mix as well, which have been absolutely through the roof, I think he's topping both assists and goals in the Premier yeah, League, miles ahead. which is just silly. You know what I mean? Like when Harry Kane did that, I think it was last season, everyone was waxing Liverpool, but this guy, Salah, is making that record look silly right now. Yeah, he got, 30, he got 32 and 36 in his first season. Mm -hmm. And he's better now than he was then. Yeah, the flip yeah. side is, can he play those? Is he going to play 36 games? As it stands right now, he's played... Again, he's played 16 league games. He's, played, he he's, he's been on... Yeah. He's played, plays every game. Every game he, yeah. he? So, if he misses... I think if he misses four for AFCON, and he's, if, even if he plays... I think even if he plays 30 games, or missed eight games... I still, you could back him to score a goal a game. Like, I, I don't think it's unrealistic, which just shows the level of play he's at. Tom, he's, he's a superstar. Oh, I'm massively. The only thing that goes against him in comparison to that year is that in 17 18, everyone just believed it was going to stop. Oh, he can't yeah. keep scoring like that. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go 1v1, leave the left back on him. Whereas now it's like, I mean, the game against Villa, Gerard had like four markers. <laughs> they were, and unfortunately, we didn't score the goals on the other side, but. That's the only thing you're getting with him now is he's taken that many players out the game and, mm. and we, we might score through Jota and Mane, etc. But he might just get a little bit more attention to maybe stop him getting those gay goals in those games. But flip side that is like you said, you know, look at what happened to Old Trafford. Once a game gets opened up, Mo Salah will cut you, you know, in half and, and the best way he plans and all that, but like I say, yeah. He still got his goal against... He, the reason he gets to the goal, I know people like sometimes disparage penalties as a, as a goal of that, but he, he, would, yeah. he literally skipped around their best player. Yeah. I thought Mings was amazing in that game. He was head and block and tackling yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And Salah, he has he needs one moment, though, either way, he, yeah. and, he, and he gets himself on the... Yeah, I, I agree. I think that... Let's go to the comments there. So we've got... Um, 
I'd Rano says Salah could potentially get 30 goals and 20 assists in the league this season, and uh, which is again it's outrageous to think about it. What's the what's the combined record? Because he's on 30 now, isn't he? It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was the Bruno, wasn't it? And and, um, and and Kane had it a while. Yeah, yeah I think Kane. That'd have to be the highest, though, wouldn't it? 30 and 20. That'd oh yeah, he was, oh, yeah I think Henry had some silly record at one point, didn't he? As and, well. And then unknown strangers, he's uh, he's guaranteed to score 40 plus goals in all comps this season if he goes well. He can easily get 50 plus 25 assists. And again, in all <laughs> comps so far this season. He's already on his 21 goals yeah, and he's mad. already on his nine assists. So, yeah, like you say, 30. Mm. It's there's nothing's that nothing's out of reach for this fella, especially if they go far in Europe and yeah. in the cups. Like at some point, he'll be playing those cup games yeah. as well, depending on how we all go there. But yeah, I think it's a uh, it's it's mad that you could even say he's going to be a 30 goal player. I mean, we know for a fact. Again, AFCON permitting ha- actually happening mm. as it stands, he's not actually going to be available. And we're all quite confident of it. I think that's uh, mm. absolutely absurd, really. Right, guys, we actually do some football kick up questions. I hope all you lot have been tweeting in and moaning at me in the comments. <laughs> uh, we're happy with that one. Um, before we get into our reaction to the whole Champions League draw, who got screwed, who, who, who's happy that there was a redo and everything in the middle, how it happened in the first place. We're going to take a quick break to give you guys a little bit of an update on our Advent draw. So every day between December 1st and December 25th this year, we are doing a live prize draw on one of our shows or on the socials for our Club Legends subscribers over on Red Men Plus. Got some amazing prizes to give away, but to tell you more about it, I'm going to hand over to some very, very handsome chap who's going to give you some more information about it. Hey guys, Steve here with some excellent news for you. Usually throughout the year, we do a monthly draw for all our amazing Club Legend subscribers. Well, in the month of December, it's the festive period and we're feeling kind, we're feeling giving. So what we're going to be doing every single day from December 1st right up until Christmas Day is a daily draw for all our Club Legend subscribers. We've got some amazing prizes to give away as well. We're going to go through those shortly, but what we're going to do is show you how you guys can make sure your name is in the hat to win some of these amazing gifts and prizes so if you are not a subscriber to red men plus if you want to go and join now it's very very simple go to the red men tv website you click the button that says join us from there sign up join as a club legend either on a monthly subscription or as a yearly subscription and you guys will automatically be entered into every single one of these prize draws if you are one of our club captain subscribers and you want to upgrade your account to become a club legend very very simple how you do that from the home page you click the my account button and follow the steps there to upgrade again either a monthly or a yearly subscription very very simple so what amazing prizes have you got i hear you ask well let me tell you that we've got a book from mona Ember, the liverpool's head of nutrition We've got a signed picture of Michael Owen. We've got a Hendo 10 box full of goodies. We've got DVDs. We've got socks. We've got a signed author's edition of our Hendo 10 book. We've got a signed medal signed by former Liverpool striker Michael Owen. We've got our new DVD, Let's Talk About Six. We've got calendars. We've got a signed picture from Liverpool captain Jordan Henderson. We've got every single one of our new Christmas sweaters. You can see them behind me here. All of them, they are flying out of the store, but you can get one for free if you enter this draw. And then the big one on Christmas Day, saving the best to last look at this beauty. It's a framed signed shirt by none other than the king. The king, Sir Kenny Daglish. What a prize that is. And all you guys have to do to be in the draws is be a Club Legend subscriber. So sign up at the Red Men TV as a Club Legend. You'll be in the draw. If you're a club captain now, upgrade your subscription to Club Legend and you too will be in the draw. 25 of these draws will be happening through the month of December. Make sure you're in it. Yeah, so there you go. If you want to be involved in all of those draws, it's very, very simple. All you got to do is go head on over to the redmentv.com, become a subscriber to Redmen Plus on the Club Legend tier, and, and you'll be in the draws. If you are a club captain subscriber already, and you, if you want to be in the draws, all you got to do is upgrade your account to become a club legend. Very, very, very simple. And you'll be, again, Christmas Day, the star prizes, that's signed King Kenny shirt. So uh, get yourselves involved if you want to. Right, guys, I want to talk to you about this Champions League draw fiasco, because, I mean, that's the only way we can describe it. We felt the brunt of it in studio. We had to do two live shows. Um, we had to wind Chris Page up twice. We, got, we, have to, we have to, he's so energetic over there on the board. And then he, he kind of shot us load a bit and we had to, we had to go and like, lay down to go again. <laughs> it messed up our plans. We had shows to go. Imagine the whole world was like, oh, my God. Um, First of all, Sam, 
it's not a surprise that they can be incompetent, is it? Like you even like but the levels of not being able to pick the right ball out of the right pot with the right names in it mm. is just beyond belief. It's 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 a joke, really. I know they blame the computer telling them which balls can and can't be picked. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to say, I know that he's just said Villarreal, I, therefore I know in my head yeah. it cannot be Manchester United, it cannot be Real Madrid. Like it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. There's like three or four of them on the mics in the years as well. It, there's no excuse for it. To blame, I mean, as a technologist, to blame the AI, it's disgusting. They should, should apologise for that, to be honest. It was blatantly a, a, a human error. I, um, I say, I, I didn't actually see it live. I, I caught the end of the draw um, when when United got left with PSG and I was laughing, texting all my mates who are my new fans. And then next minute, that was a disgrace. And I'm like, well, you know, what are you talking yeah. about? Obviously then find out what happened. But listen, it was a mistake. It was stupid. Shouldn't have happened. But can we just say this? I don't know what you boys think about this. Why can't we play English teams? Why? Yeah. I get it. You shouldn't be able to play the team from your group. Mm. That's what you earn. So we don't play Atleti, but we should be able to play anybody else. It's Europe, you know. That's what it is. Yeah, I hundred percent. That was actually you've you've, you've skipped me head there. Let's Sorry. go for it. No, no, it's <laughs> you've, you've, you've saved me a job of trying to figure out a way to introduce that topic. Yeah. But Dan, I get that you can't you shouldn't play the team in your group because like no one wants to see the same teams no. playing the same teams. That's not the point of the Champions League. If it was, we'd have invented some type of Super League that we. Like, that's what that would have been. But. I agree. I, I think the country protection, I get why they do it, by the way, and it's all about the ding-dong money, yeah, money, money, because they don't want... To see that. Well, basically, rather than selling BT, BT know when they make the bid for the Champions League, they're going to get... If, if four English teams get through, they're going to get four different games yeah. with the English, and they're going to do their best to make sure one's on the 15th, one's on the 16th, uh -huh. one's on the 22nd, one's on the 23rd. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to want to try mm -hmm. and do. So I get it. But from an integrity of the competition thing, I think it's nonsense. Like, the best... like. The fact that Liverpool at the end there could be left where they literally couldn't get Villarreal, even though Villarreal were, were a perfectly legitimate opportunity for Liverpool to play because of the fact that it was Inter and Real were left and Juventus and it was PSG, wasn't it, again? Yeah. It was the other one. Like, yeah. Liverpool literally, the, Villarreal was off the table. That should never really happen, I don't think. It's, it's a strange one. It definitely is a strange one, and I think it left half of Twitter wondering why we couldn't get Villarreal, but including myself, by the way, For I'm happy, minutes, yeah. happy to admit that as well, because I just didn't understand why we couldn't, but obviously the country thing comes into it. And I think it is a little bit outdated now that, and I think they are making a lot of changes to Champions League, including scrapping away goals as well this season. Yeah. And I think that country situation could be the next one that gets binned off, perhaps because of the confusion yesterday, because it was chaos. Like, Andre Arshavin, he looked absolutely... <laughs> he looked he looked, anyway, though, don't he? He looked lost, though, didn't he? Let's have it. Right. And it was obvious from the outset, wasn't it? Because obviously the fella picked up on the fact that United couldn't get Villarreal. That was fine. But then he, he was put the ball back on the table and you think, nah, that can't be right. <laughs> yeah. That's got to go somewhere else. You know what I mean? So it was just carnage, wasn't it, to watch. Yeah. And like you say, it messed up my day having to do two reactions <laughs> to it as well. But yeah, it's one of them things. Um, but in terms of the countries, I think we are probably at the end of the road whereby that can be a legitimate thing now. I, I agree in terms of it, integrity of the competition. The reason, I, again, Sam, I don't think it's going to happen is, is the money. Like mm -hmm. the Champions League exists solely as a money making opportunity for everyone involved UEFA and all the clubs if, it, if, if the TV companies say we like it because we again the last thing that the Spanish TV show, again I know Barcelona are in but if Barcelona ever get back to it which I'm sure they will at some point <laughs> they don't want Real and Barcelona in the same game in the quarters they mm. want them playing two separate games same in Italy they don't want Milan versus Milan they want them in four games so they can put four different TV shows on that's why that's the only reason this exists and that's why I don't think they would do it because, they, because it's all about the money it always, yeah. every road leads back to someone getting rich hmm. and someone's getting richer by having this rule in place yeah it's, and, and, and let's, let's be honest it's the top, top, top teams that it protects because, you know, Bayern Munich probably wouldn't care if they got Dortmund. Not ideal, but they'd probably beat them over two legs. I would, I would be happy with getting English teams who came second. I mean, if we'd got Chelsea, it wouldn't have been ideal. But, but you'd yeah, fancy exactly, you, yeah. it's a Champions League. You've got to, you've got to, it's to win that trophy. You've got to beat the best teams. Yeah. But if, if, if the reality is as well is with a lot of countries, if, if Sport and Lisbon got Benfica, I don't know if that would have worked this time around. But it, let's just hypothetically say it would have, right? Mm. That's an amazing tie for that country. Their TV is going to be massive. People would watch that because. PSG versus Real, which I'm sure we're going to cover in a moment, is a big tie. Mm. But really, out of the other ones, are you really unsure about who's going to win? There might be a, a, a bit of a, a, an underdog win. Some will come out with a surprise. I don't know where I'm, 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 Ajax might get beat. But realistically, you could probably go through seven of those ties and go, they're going to win, they're going to win, they're going to win, they're going to win. All right, you'll pick United and that Letty and go flip a coin yeah, and probably PSG so. and, and Real. But 
the ties aren't really that glamorous. When you get the big ones, like your PSGs and your Real, everyone's fuming or your man using your PSGs, it actually does something to the last 16. It actually makes it worth watching. So if you could have an AC Milan versus Inter Milan last 16, number one, it gives Italy a chance to actually make a quarterfinal, which they're not gonna, they might not do for a while. And secondly, it makes it makes a game worth watching. I agree. Like if Chelsea, for example, could have got Liverpool, they could, if there was an opportunity for, to get Liverpool City or mm. United, like, I get the money revenue thing and they were having separate games, but BT would make a fortune off that game being on their channel, you think? Because everybody, the, the whole country would be watching it, wouldn't they, down at the same time? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, there'd be interest from across the board, wouldn't there? Um, it's interesting to know, I'm not a massive fan of playing English clubs, but I think I'd rather play them in the early rounds, i.e. Mm. the 16 in the final, because obviously when we had Spurs in the final, there was every bone in my body just hated that. We were miles better than they were, of course we were, and we should have won, but it was an English club, wasn't it? Yeah. So if we ended up, it might give us an opportunity, if this rule was scrapped, to knock them out earlier, been to get them in the yeah. final, because if we ever play City or something like that in the final, or oh United, could you imagine United in Champions League final? I couldn't think of anything worse. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I want to go back then, guys, and... Uh, We've had, a, we've had a super chat in, by the way, from Trig Josh, five pounds super. Cheers, Trig Josh, who says, Sal, going back to the Mo Salah conversation that we were on earlier, he says, uh, Salah's upcoming performance at the AFCON and his ongoing contract negotiations. There may be a flurry of bids coming in for other clubs from Mo Salah. I think we spoke about this on the last week's, on last week's podcast. The bids are coming this summer if they, they don't get it sorted. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Liverpool, I think we're all in agreement there. Yeah, you're right, mate. We, Liverpool definitely need to get that sorted before that. Um, let's move on then. I want to talk about like the, the, the right draw, wrong draw, because I was talking about like, Who's happy with the redraw? Like the team they got, like for example, like Liverpool got a harder draw second time round than yeah. they did first time. Like, yeah, so Inter Milan are better than RB Salzburg. Um, but there was a few others. So first of all, I want to look at this uh, this wrong draw. I, I'm get, I'm going to highlight PSG there. Who had Man United first, and then they end up there down down here having to play Real Madrid. So they're fuming. PSG are fuming. Real Madrid are absolutely livid because they got Benfica. They wanted that tie to stand yeah. to go from Benfica to, to PSG. It should have, by the way, as well. You think it's yeah. harsh what they did. Yeah, they should have like, just counted back to where it went wrong. Yeah, I agree. But they said like they couldn't they couldn't confirm that like, the computer worked, right? There's a very simple way to do that, lads. Go back on the camera because millions and just see, <laughs> just watch the video. Did that fella have the right balls in that pot? If he did, I agree. I think he should have stood. I think Real Madrid have been diddled there. I'd love to be a fly on the wall in Florentino's office there, Dan, because <laughs> they're what they're probably the team who are thinking our draw was. We think we think it was right. We think every ball was in the right place at that point. Like we don't think nothing went wrong because it couldn't have because they literally could have played pretty much everyone yeah. other than the, the mm. team in their group and the, and the, and the Spanish. They, they must be even they must be absolutely livid about this. Oh yeah, they've been the hardest done by by far, haven't they? Let's be honest. And he's not exactly outspoken the best of times, is he Perez? They're obviously the main protagonist behind the Super League as well, so it's quite ironic oh, how yeah. it's sort of come back around <laughs> with UEFA. Um and I think Real Madrid was sort of saying when the, the whole will it be redrawn, won't it be redrawn thing was going on, Real Madrid were quite adamant that it wouldn't be and I think there's quite a lot of reports coming out saying they've told UEFA they're quite happy, which I imagine they would have been, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, for them to Go away from Benfica and get PSG is a real kick in the seat. I had fears of that happening to Liverpool, to be honest with you. It nearly thought, did, didn't it? Yeah, it I thought, it, I, when PSG were left in, I thought, here we go. This is, a, but obviously, Real Madrid, and that's a serious contest now for them, that. I mean, it's not half. I suppose you're the ones who are quite happy. So, Bayern Munich go from having Atletico Madrid, Sam, to uh, getting RB Salzburg again. Mm. They'll be happy with that one. And then, I, I, poor Lille, they must have been like. <laughs> Buzzing. Oh, we yeah. get a redraw. We don't yeah. Chelsea. We don't have to go and play Chelsea, and then and then Chelsea come back out again. They must be like, what are the what are the odds? That poor Leo. They were and they finished top of the group. That's harsh. Chelsea, Chelsea. If they sort the defense out, up the worst teams to get over two legs, wouldn't it? To play against that back, yeah, back yeah, five, would, back yeah. six, whatever you want to call it. Uh, over two legs when you're not let, let's be honest Lille are what mid-table this year struggling yeah, yeah they're, they're they not are. gonna they're not gonna do nothing there Man City somehow went from having sport on Lisbon sorry from Villarreal to sport on Lisbon Man City and cup draws it's again I, I get that's that a harder game you know sport and the best than Villarreal yeah, yeah they are, that's, I would slightly say, harder yeah they're still they're still happy with what they got oh, but yeah. Villarreal are, are rubbish like rubbish yeah. and Dan Jume is decent though isn't he I like him that's got yeah, good, yeah, yeah, decent, well, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He, Sporting the, the, the Portuguese champions, rather yeah. play the Portuguese champions than the thirteenth best team in Villa in, in Spain. Like <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think you'd rather play them. I was thinking before it was Atletico Madrid who were really, really pushing for this by all accounts, yeah. and rightly so, by the way, because they got put into a draw where there was one less team in it. It was them yeah. and Man United, and as it stands, the draw. Sorry, that the reason that we done the redraw, Sam, was because that it was physically impossible with the ball situation for Atletico to get Man United. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? They put the ball in the right pot and lo and, and behold, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. got Atletico versus Man United. It feels to me like, 
at Let's Year, like we're quite happy we put the push on there because we, oh, yeah. we we were almost going to the Allianz and now we're going down to Old Trafford at Let's Year. The main protagonist of getting the redraw done, thrilled, absolutely thrilled with this one. Bayern Munich probably looked at Chelsea and thought, we're probably better than them, but they're the team that we don't want to get out of everyone because Juve are not the same side. Oh no, they, they won the group anyway. Inter not the same side, etc., mm. etc. So, but Atletico have just got something about them, haven't they? So they'll be made up with that. But Atleti versus Man United is a really, really interesting tie. Because bear in mind, it's two months away. So yeah. Ralph Rang- Ralph Rang- yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. going to have his, his, his teeth in by then, isn't he? And have a shape about them. Whatever they're going to be, they're going to be by then, aren't they? So they, they'll be happier. I, I don't know. Am I new happier? No. No. I think you'd rather play... I think... Uh, I think you would rather Man U. Sorry, Man U will be. I think Man U will be happy. Yeah, PSG rather. than yeah. they originally. Yeah, yeah, I think they would yeah. rather play Madrid than PSG. Mm. Do you yeah. Want to, because yeah, it, it's just PSG. Two different, just, two different types of challenges. Isn't that? I know yeah. Man United went to, to Paris didn't they, Dan, and beat they them did, a couple yeah. of seasons ago. But like PSG, I think I would having played Atletico this season. Yeah, they aren't the Atletico that they were even when we played them last year or the year before or whatever. I think United will be quite quite happy that they got their redraw as well. I think so, yeah. And I think the important thing to notice is they're not the Atletico they had been previously. But with it being two months, if Simeone can get them back in check and get them anywhere near what they were, that's a really difficult tie. And it's a very different one for United because they'd have been thinking about PSG for that two hours whereby that existed and thinking, God, they can just tear you apart with Messi, yeah. Neymar and Mbappe, obviously. But now Atletico, they're a very different proposition. They're quite stout. They're quite defensively sound. They can be difficult to break down. So a lot of that depends, in my opinion, and I wouldn't like to call it now, but where them two clubs are at come February. And I suppose, and the, yeah. the, one thing to say, Dan, and we've got two people in the chat saying that Perry and Jeremiah both say, like, Ronaldo owns Atletico Madrid. He does. He scores against them a lot of times. Like, he does. He does he's one of those clubs where, like, he always seems to score. We've got them at, we've got, we've got Sadio Mane who does that to Crystal Palace. Like, every time he plays them, he scores. Cristiano's record against Atletico is pretty special. What, what you have been robbed of, if he really wants yeah. it, by, is the. The Messi Ronaldo, that I mean, it just writes itself. That one, yeah. they've, they've, they've cost themselves that by being incompetent because they, <laughs> they, they very nearly had that. They didn't yeah, have yeah. To, so there's another one who's probably good to the UA for a few and that they haven't got that one, are they? Yeah, or massively. I mean, the, it's probably not a bad thing though because it, it, I don't think it would have lived up to its expectation, if that makes sense. Like, I think because just looking at PSG for a second, if, if their two games against Man City was a tie, PSG go through. 2 0 and they lose 2 1. You, yeah. People forget that. Oh, PSG are crap now in the radio. It's like, mate, they lost 2 1 and they won 2 0. Like, translate that to a tie. I know it doesn't always work that way, but they're, they're a side. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I actually think that, although the two different challenges, where I, where I agree with you both is PSG would have wiped the floor with United home and away, I think. Hmm. Um, but with, with the Atletico thing, if you look at the game at Anfield, they had no Griezmann and a load of injuries. The game at their place. That could have. That was a tense game until yeah, Griezmann would... got sent off. Man, you go into the one there under that atmosphere is serious test. Of, yeah. you know, as Maguire got the, the bollocks to hold up to that, I'm not sure. You know, like Aaron Wambasaka, you know, not the greatest on the ball. But all that, all that, you know, mm-hmm. noise coming at him. It's a big test that you know. Yeah, it's going to be a really, really good game. I suppose the, the last one I want to speak about then is so into Milan. Dan, let's put it, put it on that point of view. Listen, they had Ajax who won every group game. It's worth mentioning, by the way. Like. They go from in, unbeaten Ajax and then they get Liverpool. Mm. I'm guessing, again, both really good teams, by the way, and they both, again, it's mad that we've had three unbeaten teams in the Champions League, by the way. As much as a song and dance made about us, two others did it, Ajax yeah, did it, and Bayern did it. Yeah. Instead of going from one unbeaten side to, to the other, and I know we're thinking, oh, we've got a harder draw there, but Inter Milan must be fuming. Like, and again, <laughs> that is no disrespect to Ajax. I think that is just praise for Liverpool. They've gone from playing a very, very good team to like, one of the best teams on the, in the world now. They must be fuming about this as well. They'll be livid. And I think I've seen some instant reaction from some Italian journals yesterday and they were livid. Like when you do um, translate tweet on there, it was just, why? Why has this <laughs> happened? Like, and, and we are so potent in this Champions League because we just score goals from all over the place. Obviously, we spoke about Salah. He's lethal anywhere. But when you look at the Italian league, obviously we played AC Milan the other week and we spoke about it here last week in terms of I expected a hell of a lot more from them. They were top of Serie A at the time. Inter Milan have just gone top by a point. But if it's that tight between them two and our B team basically wiped the floor with them in the San Siro. In a must-win game. You've got, yeah. They, They had to come and play, didn't they, AC? And they didn't. And if them two are neck and neck... Listen, Inter Milan have got threats. They've got Martinez, they've got Dzeko, they've got Alexis Sanchez. We all know what he used to be. But right now... God, Inter Milan would be gutted to have us. <laughs> I suppose, though, Sam, like, 
Do you think uh, my thing was with this with the whole redraw thing? I think they had to redraw it. By the way, I don't think there's any given the fact oh, yeah, that I agree. given the fact that I was literally not a team in the pot, <laughs> they had to do it. I get it, but it, it just like do you think it undermines the competition going forward? Now, because there'll be fans of every other team having this conversation. Oh, we nearly had them. Now we've got them. Now we've got him. Now we've got them. It's just another thing. Like it hasn't been a great weekend for sport in terms. Of, I mean, yeah. it has in terms of <laughs> getting people talking about it, but in terms of like. The, the action away from the field or the, yeah. or the racetrack as it was with the Formula 1 like dictating what, what the, the narrative is like it's a, it's a bad look for you they, could, they, they just wanted the footy on the pitch like the last thing you need is a fuck up of fellas not being able to pull the right ball out of the right pot it just looks bad yeah I mean obviously the F1 crazy um, started before that by the way actually John Moss seems to think people have got hands now it must yeah. be it must be Salah's muscles there have now convinced <laughs> referees that there's a, there's, there's a hand now there. So anyway, John Moss hasn't got yeah, muscles oh, there, and his that. mate in the VAR <laughs> Jesus Christ but yeah um, come back to the draw I actually think barring what we said before with the count back draw where they go back to the Real Madrid because I think they, was, they were right they should have yeah. they, nothing was wrong at that point but apart from that I actually think UEFA saved themselves a little bit because imagine they just upheld that draw yeah. That would have been insane. It would have been chaos. It would have ruined the whole Champions League. It would have been legal. Have been, yeah, yeah, all kinds been, of yeah. chaos. But what it does do is it also exposes those few clubs that are shit houses, really, who are like sort of... If anyone complains now, the mentality that's set for your club is like, well, you're you're weak. You're not, you're not up for this you didn't, challenge. Like, yeah. Aleti, you didn't, fan, you didn't, you didn't fancy yeah. buying. Oh, yeah. That, it's there now, isn't it, for all to see? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Whereas, like, you know, Klopp's like... Into Milan, proper tie. Get to go back to San Siro. Some of the players are probably like that. Van Dijk, oh, didn't get to go there. Yeah. Henderson, brilliant. So there's that positive side of it. And I think if you go front foot with it, if man, you go, you know what, bring on Atleti, we can beat them. If Atleti go, yeah, we'll take United now. I mean, obviously, Bayern's a different proposition, but I think it adds to it. I think UEFA have saved themselves personally. Like, that could have been a lot worse. If the shoe was on the other foot and it was Liverpool who got a really tough draw... Do you think we'd have complained like they? I, I've got a feeling they probably would have. Like if if it, if it turned out, if, say for example, it was Liverpool who got drew against PSG, and it turned yeah. out that because they were on some like for example, I don't know, Man United weren't in the pot at the same time. When we we would have, I'm guessing Liverpool would have had a word as well. Then that's the flip side, isn't it? Because and I don't think it's a it's a weakness thing. I think it's more like an integrity of the competition. Like it's, like the fact is, if we I always talk about a couple of years ago the Champions League, two years ago when they had that little mini tournament in Lisbon just mm. as COVID. Like I think that delegitimised that Champions League. I know it was Bayern who went and won it, wasn't it at the time? Yeah, like, beating PSG. Agree, yeah. yeah, but like. No games over two legs, neutral venues. It, like, it was no way goals. It, was, it, yeah. it went a bit strange. Like it would have really, it would have damaged us. So we had to do it. So it, it's one of those where I agree with what you're saying. I don't think that Letty looked particularly great about it. I'm just quite happy it wasn't us who had to go and throw that throw the moan in because we it didn't really it didn't really affect us too much. No, it didn't, and it wasn't a great look for Athletic, like you say, because it does kind of put you in positions where you think you are in the pecking order. Because if if Athletic don't think they can go to Bayern Munich and get anything, then their hopes for this Champions League aren't great, are they? Let's yeah. be honest about it, you know. And a similar case for United, they obviously won the fancy PSG much, but. From an integrity point of view and from what's right point of view, if Liverpool had got PSG, I'd have wanted us to be kick up a stink because it wasn't right, was it? And listen, I fancy us, had we have got it, I would have fancied us to get something at PSG yeah. and beat them, you know what I mean? Because we are a better side than they are. But at the same time, it was pretty evident to see that that draw had been made a complete man, you mess got, man, of, you like, got, man, you got diddled. They were, were in like no pots for like five minutes and then yeah. until, <laughs> until they realised... All of a sudden they were back in, it was yeah. weird. Do, do, like, do you know what? I reckon PSG would have complained before we did. Yeah, Possibly, reckon, yeah, because yeah, they would have yeah, been like, yeah. not not that they're scared of us, but it's like, hang on a minute, wow, wow. like yeah. like if it was City or Liverpool, either yeah. one, I think they would have been like, no, because they'd rather get United, wouldn't they? Yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah, which yeah, says a lot yeah, about yeah. United as well. By the way, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it absolutely does. Do you think this happened before? We just haven't noticed this, Sam. Like because the only reason this got this got flagged was because he pulled Man United out of the Villarreal one, mm -hmm. and that cocked the whole computer system up. Like if, if for example, on that Villarreal ball, if they'd have pulled out any other team, so for example, now they got Juve. If Juve would have just come out that pot, and we'll uh, we'd yeah. never have known yeah. that Man City, I think, it was weighing in there. Or yeah. you know, what I mean, like it must have, mustn't it? Like if it's if it's happened once, they've got a little bit unlucky in the fact that they've been caught doing it almost. But the odds are, if they can call her a bunch, it might have happened before. They just got a little bit unlucky with it. I don't know. I mean, because there would have always been one club who would have been felt hard done by. Because there's no there's no draw there. Because a team like, say, Sporting or Lille, not Lille, would have been there, Sporting or Atletico, they were always, one of them was always going to get a tough tie. So if there was any illegitimacy to it, 
they're going to flag it up, aren't they? Yeah. I, I'm mm. not sure. I mean, if, from my previous memories of watching these draws, it's always been Liverpool, they can get, da, 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 and they can't get Villarreal. Mm. They usually explain it yeah. because that would leave only that. They usually explain it, whereas this time they didn't, did they? Yeah. And then that's why it caused the confusion, what you were talking about before, Dan. Villarreal, so yeah. I think, I actually don't think it has. I think this is a bit of a one off. Do you, why, why don't they just use a computer? Stick, stick the algorithmic rules in like they do with the fixtures and go bang and it'll just spit out the results. Oh, the flip side is you just like what you mentioned before. <laughs> it's, it's just open draw it. And uh, I'm going to leave the, the part and comments on this draw then to, to one Mr. Michael Owen. Oh, and did did you this. hear what Michael Owen's, <laughs> yeah. Michael Owen's comment of this? I'm going to drag them up now. It was, it was, it was vintage Michael really and it was literally along the lines of um, some teams will be happy with the draw some won't unless they got the same team again. He was just absolutely, he's, a, he's an absolute. He's late. I think it's brilliant, you know. I, I, I take it for what he is now. He's yeah, just, yeah. He's, he's just frontally boring. <laughs> and he, he owns it. I suppose though, even he was, you mentioned about the confusion there, didn't you, uh, Dan? Like, it was a bit confusing. Like, they, they never explained why Liverpool couldn't get further out. I was on the live show and people were just on, in the chat going, what's going on, what's going on? Why can't we get them? Why can't we get them? It, they could have done a better job of explaining it. Like the fella who looked fake Claudio Ranieri fella could have just said, listen, <laughs> there's a reason why, there's a reason why, even though Liverpool can be playing Villarreal, they actually can't now because of the fact that he didn't explain it, 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 it did them yeah. no favours there at the end. Not at all, no, especially given what had gone before, I think it just added to confusion because we were all sat there almost waiting for another cock up and thinking on any little thing. And when that happened and I thought, how come we can't get Villarreal in my head? Because no one has said a word as to why. Obviously, we're not from the same country. We weren't in our group. And I was thinking, there's no legitimate reason. Because without knowing who was left in the pot to be drawn out, like off the top of your head, like I say, you were knackered. And when we didn't get them and couldn't get them, there was uproar on Twitter and obviously on your comments as well. Yeah, I, mean, I, I want to I I make sure I get this Michael Owen quote exactly right. It was, everyone's going to have a better or worse draw unless you draw the same team. <laughs> He's not wrong. No, he's not. No. Factually, factually <laughs> correct. He, he like, like, uh, yeah. The team who wins this game will be the team who scores the most yeah. goals. He's literally has said that before in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're a striker, you have a shot. You either yeah. score or, or you, you miss. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you must just look at him and be like, yeah. You've read right, my clan. <laughs> you've, added, you've added some great <laughs> mirth to this in depth discussion of this of this fiasco draw. So, yeah, oh. props to Michael Owen. <laughs> so, I'm going to get, we've done this on our react show, uh, me and Chris and Paul, but I'm going to get, I'm going to ask you guys this like, who you, who you think is going to go through from each tie. Okay, okay. I'll go, I'll start with the big one PSG, Real, PSG, PSG versus Real Madrid. I think PSG are going to win it this year. Uh, so, you think PSG, yeah. obviously, then? Bayern are going to beat Salzburg. So, I think Sorry, I think PSG will yeah. get past that one. Yeah, I do. Bayern against RB. We're all going for Bayern. Bayern, yeah. yeah we're God. all we're all picking City to beat Sporting. Yeah. 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 Benfica, Ajax. I guess I'm Ajax. Ajax. Ajax, Ajax. Yeah. Chelsea are going to beat Lille. Yeah. Yeah. Atletico v Man United. Sam. Atletico. Atletico for me as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Villarreal, Juventus. Juve. That's the shock for me. Villarreal get through that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. cool. And then we're back in Liverpool we're to beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned before, there's not. I don't think there's like there's, other than that top tie, and this is the, the de facto moment of the, how the draw works. Mm. They're all very one-sided games. There's, there's PSG and Real Madrid isn't mm. big teams. Atletico Man United isn't, but that's more in a fallen giants yeah. to yeah. get back kind of thing. Everyone else has got a clear thing, and I suppose that's what you're going to get when you have these type of draws. But the flip side is. You should be, I think you should be rewarded for winning your group. But that, that's so what we want to see as well, Steve, is we want to see like like last year's last date was 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 a bit flawed, wasn't it? And it's happened to us before when we got we got Porto in the quarters, didn't we, when we when we won it. Yeah. We won it yeah. Yeah, so yeah. um and it happened to Chelsea last year, they got Porto and, and they of all the countries for them to get a Portuguese team, so took it was two neutral venues, it mm. was like well, easy. So like that's the thing that might not happen this year. If if um, yeah, there should be some if, big teams in the last. If days. Ajax are as good as they've looked, and I know they got beat at the weekend in the league. I looked at that, so mm. they're actually not top at the minute. PSV are so we, that could be an indicator of where they're at. But let's just say, for instance, Ajax are as good as we think they are, and if everybody we expect gets through, so let's say you were wrong and you yeah, kick course. on yeah, and get yeah. through, yeah, it means the last eight's going to be tasty. It could, they're giving out if if it could be PSG, Bayern, City, Ajax, Chelsea, Juve, Liverpool. Atletico Madrid I mean, or like, even United they're still a yeah, big yeah, yeah, name. Yeah, that's what you want them, isn't it, in the last eight that's what you want it to look like in many yeah. ways you, you know haven't I mean? got that draw where like I don't know if, if, City get well if Lille Le- if, Le- if <laughs> Lille got Rotherham. if Lille got Villa- <laughs> if, if, yeah, if, if Lille with all due respect to Lille got Villarreal and one of them's in the quarters yeah. Yeah. and then all of a sudden like 
You'd want the winner next, though, wouldn't yeah, you? I mean, yeah, like, every, yeah, yeah, everyone's rigging. Everyone wants that draw. Everyone wants yeah. Andre Arsch having in that draw. Just like, <laughs> I actually, I actually, yeah. I actually, the only one there. If they do go for you, look at and go, yeah. Or, yeah, of or Villarreal, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course they are, yeah. So yeah, guys, thanks very much. Yeah, I like going back to the, a few of the comments. Um, just to let, let us know, like when Pool says Michael Owen was kind of right. <laughs> in, 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 he definitely, definitely was. Um, and then going back to the draw as well. Then, so I thought this was an interesting one. So and Pip Jim says, you know, Man United every right to complain. Like we don't think their name was in the hat until literally the PSG thing. So if you yeah, are going back, like yeah, they, they were absolutely spot on. I'm going to leave that one there. Then, guys, thanks very much. Um, we're going to come back to talk about the Jude Bellingham links to Liverpool. They came out about f- a couple of days after we recorded last week's podcast. So I wanted to t- touch on that and get the guy's opinion. But first, if you guys are looking for a Christmas gift for yourself or for somebody you know and love, why not give them the, 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 the gift of Red Men Plus? Why not? Why not? Why not? And after find out that we are now selling our, our gift cards over on our website, for more information, I'm going to hand over to a slightly less handsome man than the guy before. Hey, what's happening? This Christmas, give the gift of incredible Liverpool content, documentaries, features, interviews, podcasts, and pre- and post-game analysis for all Liverpool's games this season with our three-month gift card subscription to Redmen Plus. The cards are available right now on redmenmerch.com and will give you full access to every piece of content we make on a weekly basis and hundreds of hours of content available in our back catalogue, including the Hendo 10 documentary series, exploring the derelict Melwood and instant match reactions and final words after every Liverpool football club game. Get involved now. Those gift cards are available on redmenmerch.com and give the gift of happiness and Liverpool football club this Christmas. So there you go. Like I say, if you want to get involved with Redmen Plus and all of the great content that we've got to create over the next couple of months as Liverpool hopefully push towards a, a famous quadruple and everything mm-hmm. we've ever done, including our, you know, our back catalogue of documentaries, features, interviews, some class stuff on there, get that code or get that card. Rather, you go to scratch the code off, put it in the in the website when you sign up and, and you've got it all there at your fingertips for your viewing and or listening uh, delight. We, every show that we produce pretty much in video and podcast form, so you've got no reason to miss any of those. As we do next year's shows, then on Red Men Plus, Sam, is the, 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 if the, the Daily Mirror to be believed, there's a chance that Jude <laughs> Bellingham could be one of the topics of conversation. I imagine his name's going to crop up a lot between now and the summer. Um, so an article on December 7th, like I say, it was literally this time, it was last week, not long after we recorded the podcast, uh, his name came up from James Nersey of the Mirror, who said Liverpool lead the race to sign June Bellingham next summer and hope to exploit Premier League rivals' obsession with his teammate Erling Haaland. Uh, Bellingham was being previously courted by United before he moved to Dortmund, but Liverpool are making plans to bring the teenage midfielder back to the UK after his mature displays for Dortmund in England, who have capped him 10 times. Top flight rivals like United, Chelsea and City are all monitoring his, his mate, Erlen Haaland, who's got a release clause, <laughs> which might basically let Liverpool sneak around the back. Um, it says, Jürgen Klopp has, in, has identified Bellingham, who's 18, to bolster the midfield ranks, where his main options include Henderson and Fabinho. And then this is the important one. German coach Klopp has not been put off by Bellingham's price tag, which is, with his old club likely to be asking for £90 million, pounds, making him our, our most expensive player of all time, if that deal happened then, Sam. Again, I'm James Nersey, the mirror, it looks like he's, he knows what he's on about. He's, he's a pretty reliable source. I don't know where he's getting his information from here. But can we see Jude Bellingham signing for Liverpool next summer? And if so, can you see Liverpool paying £90 million pound for a teenager? The, th- the thing is, that there's, there's multiple layers to this. So if you look at Jude Bellingham to begin with, as a person, mm. could have signed for Liverpool, I believe one of the London clubs and Manchester United, chose to take his own journey at, what, 17 to go and live in you know, Dortmund and, and and play for them. And what a decision that was. You know, Sancho did it, although he was already at City via Watford. So that in itself shows that he's making decisions based on football to, 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 to make the right steps in his career. I think then you look beyond that, he doesn't look to me as the type of person who's going to chase the money. Like Sancho, whichever way you look at it, in the end, no one else had a chance of signing because of the money. Yeah. We, we know that we've spoke about it before, haven't we? So... <laughs> I don't think Bellingham would make that mistake. I think he would make a step next based on his career. And looking at that, I don't think Liverpool, if there's anybody else better suited in England for sign for Liverpool. And Jürgen Klopp, Pep's going to leave before Klopp. At at the latest, he's leaving at the end of next summer. He's already said that. Um, Chelsea's probably going to have three new managers by then. United will definitely have at least one new manager by then. Yeah. 
So right now, if you're starting to make steps to move to a new club in England, surely Liverpool, and looking at our midfield craziness, Liverpool's the right club for you? Yeah, I suppose. That, 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 uh, what confused me a little bit that story is that if Dortmund can't stop Haaland leaving this summer, he's got the release clause. It's 75 mm. million quid euros around that match, yeah. which is a, 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 a relative bargain. I say that knowing exactly how stupid that sounds, but <laughs> 75 million pounds being a bargain for anything, but for Erlen Haaland it might be. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the wages and the sign on fee are going to be Crazy, extortionate. Yeah. But if Dortmund are, are resigned, they're going to lose him. Like, can they afford to go twice? Can they afford, having just lost Sancho, and I know that's their model, by the way, this is how they exist as a football club. They bring these players through, young lads, get them from other clubs or whatever, and then just rinse the backside of other big clubs who, who weren't clever enough to do it in the first place. Or, or whatever, you know, or we weren't going to give them the game time, so they've all got, like, Sancho and Bellingham did, they, they thought we were going to play over there mm-hmm. and get our moves. Like, can you see Dortmund letting both of those two go in the same summer? Um, you'd have to say no more generally, but because it's Dortmund, I think if it was any other football club in Europe, you'd probably just stick to that hard no. But, but you mentioned Dortmund's model there. That is what they do, and they do it really well. So there's probably no reason why not. They have a price. They had a price for Sancho. United got near to it. Off he went. Haaland, obviously, release calls are slightly different. They've probably got a price for Bellingham. If we meet it, if anyone else meets it, they'll probably say yes to it because all they do then is they signed Daniel Marlin last season. Yeah. They're probably going to do the same with him. They're after Adiemi now from Salzburg. They're probably going to do the same again. So they'll just look at it like a business transaction. From a football perspective, you, you'd never want to lose Haaland and Bellingham in the same summer. It'd be absolutely disastrous. But the way they run their club, they probably will do it and they probably would be open to it. The £90 million thing, no, Sam, that's what, again... I'm all for it, by the way, and I'm going to read some comments out in a minute. We've got people like it. In fact, I'll do it now. So, Abina says 100% worth the money. He's only 18, and we'll definitely get our money's yeah. worth. Uh, yeah, 100% right. I'd give that. Uh, Winner Pool says 100%. He acts, plays, and thinks like a 26 year old. He's a super talent with a great character. And then also, he's got a good. He mentions that he could have a good song. Like, Hey Jude writes itself for the cop. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. He writes, it, writes itself for the cop. Like, can you see Liverpool like spending ninety million pounds on a teenager? Like given that like FSG and the model and sell to buy or whatever we call it. Like, do you think there is ninety million pounds there for them to go go and sign this teenage wonder kid? I, th- I think there would be. I mean, let, let's be honest. We're, we're not going to not sell players, are we, from our squad? You know, without going too deep into it, we're probably a midfielder goes. Probox will go. Yeah, Phillips probably might Phillips go. goes. Probably a Rigi, maybe even a Rigi. Klopp is happy. desperate to get rid of it. Like, in the nicest possible way, he keeps saying, "Someone buy this man. He's yeah, really good." Yeah. And he keeps yeah. saying, it. "Well, well, this is what I mean." But he al- he also might be aware of the the fact that you know we do need to raise funds yeah. because that's what he wants to do. Definitely, and yeah. and you know, I'm sure this year with there being fans back in stadiums and we've done quite well with our shirts by the sounds of it, etc., etc. The Champions League we just downloaded money runs as well. Yeah, all, that. All, yeah, all, yeah, all of that helps. You know what I mean? That few extra million quid instalments. If the if the Liverpool have proven before, if the right deals to be done, both in and out, we'll do it. I mean, listen, you may see us buy sell someone like Sadio Mane to fund it, and then buy um, Harvey Barnes to replace Mane. You know, it might be some sort of strange collection of things that happen. It might not necessarily be a case of like we'll sell him, 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 and we'll buy Jude. It might be a case of yeah, we'll lose one big name, but we'll replace him, and then we'll sign another big name for the midfield. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So it, it, but he's a Liverpool fan. He's under Henderson's mentorship. Gerard's his hero. Jesus, Liverpool. If there's any anyone else out there calling, it's like a beacon from space coming. Go and get me, Liverpool. <laughs> SOS. <laughs> it, does, it does feel like it. But then we all thought Jaden Sancho was sending those signals yeah, unless we true. got Man United went and got him. And I, um, uh, Fortin Brass, I think I says, it says Dortmund only sold one player a big season in the last few years. I can't see Bellingham moving this summer. It's like Sancho. They're, they're well prepared to hold on to him. And I think that's that's a key thing, isn't it? Like, you're not your deal in here, uh, Dan. Like we all call Mike Edwards the master negotiator. Now, by the time this happens, probably he wouldn't be in charge. I'm mm-hmm. guessing he would be involved with it now. If it was happening, there's talks happening now. Yeah. But like, if you're talking about Max then go in terms of selling players, Edwards is good at it. Dortmund are really good at it. Like they, they literally say, no, like it's, you can have him, but you can have whoever you want. But here's the money, and we're not going less. And Man United tried every single trick in the book to get Sancho for less and less and less. And it was like, no, no, we need to stuff him. Like you can have him. I promise you, he's yours. There's the fee. Like that's that, that's what it would be. Like there's not, you're not going to get Drew Bellingham on a discount off Dortmund because there's no reason for them to give any discount to us. No, and you've got to admire him for that because yeah. that's the way we've liked Edwards running our ship. You know what I mean? We've created some generous some serious funds off some bang average players under Michael Edwards in my opinion but yeah, yeah I mean Dortmund the right to hold out for the money and that's all they did with Sancho they just held out for their price and what's like I say as soon as United got close to it off he went and I do think it'd be the same with um, Bellingham because the they don't necessarily want to get rid of Harlem, but because that release clause exists they have no choice let's be honest about it but the Bellingham situation 
Because it's so business orientated there, the way they run things, they will have a price. And if we meet it, I'm certain they'll go forget about selling two or one big player in the summer. If that price is met, if it's 90 I don't million, think it'll it matter. Yeah, they have sold Sancho the year before, wouldn't they? But of course, they would. didn't want yeah, to of course. Money. And I think, from our point of view, just to say, I think. The 90 million, yeah, it's a lot of money and it breaks our transfer record, etc. But you're talking 15 years of service there from a top player. If you keep him that entire time, obviously. And if not, you're selling for something similar, let's be honest about it. So, in my opinion, like everything Sam mentions, it's a no brainer. Would you be happy then, Sam? Because if they push about 90 million pounds on Drew Bellingham next summer, I, I, don't, I don't know what else happens in terms of innings. But you're talking about sales. Listen, my guess is, by the in this hypothetical, Mohamed Salah stays. Yeah. If he stays. And you, lose, we mentioned a couple of fringe players there. So you mentioned Chamberlain, Phillips is looking for a move. He could even go in January if, if his face, yeah, yeah. if his face heals. Pierce said that yesterday he's probably going to go in if, January if, yeah. if, his face, if his face gets better before then after <laughs> no, after <laughs> nothing's last and, and, <laughs> and then and then and them or whatever. Um, oh, like a, there's, there's a kite story. Nico Williams will probably head out. Make pretend, yeah. well, yeah. Origi. Yeah. Like, is there? Would you be happy if Liverpool's right? We're going to sell a couple of fringe lads, and and the only sign we're making this year, we're going to go massive on Jude Bellingham. How would you feel about that? Like from a from a squad point of view, squad makeup point of view, because numbers now sometimes looks a bit light. Like I can't, I can't see them spending ninety on him and then bringing another two or three in as well. No, I, I think to be honest with you. One of the things Klopp's done throughout his career is he's always wanted to produce his home players. So Trent was one of them. Curtis is the next one. Harvey Elliott's coming through that system as well. KD Gordon's clearly got a bit of a light shine on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and now Tyler Morton's come out of nowhere. And, you know, I've probably, probably missed a few along. Nico Williams has kind of popped in out of nowhere. So what Klopp enjoys doing is producing his own talent. Whether we sell them or not is another thing. So that will always be in his mind. So it, it may be a case of, oh, well, if we sell Cater and Ox, we need two more. Well, no, because Klopp might think, well, hang on, Tyler Morton is going to be one, one of my, them in the yeah. next couple of years. yeah. yeah. So it's a, it, you've got to keep that in mind when we're talking about Jürgen Klopp and our model here. But we're also at the stage as a football team where you bring in, you do the Ferguson thing, you bring in one top player to just add that few percent. If you start bringing in a couple of okay players, you're not really adding, you know, a Minamino and a, I don't know who else will be signing, not really, that, you know, as Minamino and Simakas upped our, our percentage any higher, Simakas had a bit of depth, Minamino not really. So bring in one that's going to go, Definitely, we're going to improve that area of the team indefinitely. Who you mentioned this though? Because Liverpool, we've been saying them before to wrap this up. Then Liverpool's best midfield at the moment is Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson. Yeah, like Jude Bellingham was coming to play. He spent ninety million pounds on the kid. He's coming. He's taking some one spot. Like, is it? Are, are we? <laughs> yeah. No. Are we at a point where like you know the the apprentice starts overtaking the master? Because he is. He's a big Jordan Henderson fan. He is, he's admitted yeah. this. It could be again. You can rotate him because there's, there's so many games. And they'll, all, they'll all play enough, mm-hmm. but at some point, like your best team's got to be on the pitch. And when Jürgen's picking his best team, if his £90 million pound player isn't in his best team, then I'm guessing there's people above him going, hang on a minute, like, we give you £90 million quid for this kid, he's got to be playing. That, that's, that's the only dynamic where it, it creates anything like, not controversy, but a bit of an issue is that he's probably going to have to replace the captain or Thiago like that. And that's a... That's a big ask for a kid to come in and do that. It puts a lot of pressure. The price tag puts pressure on him and the fact that he's coming in to replace either the captain of the football club or a serial winner in Thiago. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a bit of an issue for the kids if he can deal with it. It's a massive um, ask of him. and It's a big pressure in terms of team selection, of course. It is because we're sat here right now talking about that midfield and I think it's superb, that midfield three. I really do. So when you think about Bellingham maybe getting into it, it's a really difficult thing to say. Um, but what I will say is both Thiago and Henderson as good as they still are are both over 30 so we do need to think about the succession plan to that and if Bellingham would be absolutely perfect and obviously James Milner has got to retire at some point maybe in 2030 <laughs> or something like that <laughs> yeah but we've got to start thinking that way and we mentioned all the youngsters we've got there we could all of a sudden have this core of absolute quality kids, teenagers, Harvey Elliott, Kay Gordon. We're suddenly set in good stead and Klopp's always spoke about leaving a legacy when he leaves Liverpool. Now, if we can bring Bellingham into the kids we've already got, that legacy's there already, in my opinion. So, it is a big call. I think Bellingham's got what it has, what it, what it takes to do that. And I think he'd be okay with it. And in terms of not selecting him all the time, Klopp's got credit in the bank to do that, in my opinion. Yeah, he definitely, definitely has. He's a, he's a well, he's a, he looks like he's going to be the next Wales superstar. And uh, fingers crossed that we see him one day performing in a red shirt. I would be very, very happy if it was next year. Right, guys, absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for coming in and joining us today. Thank you guys for watching and or listening wherever you are. If you're watching on the YouTube, do us a favor, give us a little like, sign up and subscribe to YouTube as well, rather. Um, it does really help us. If you, if you click the little notification bell, you'll get a little alert every time we go live with one of our shows on YouTube, of which there are plenty. Right, coming up this week then, obviously, uh, in a 
in literally about half an hour's time, we've got a, the build up to the Newcastle game over on YouTube. Over on Red Men Plus, we've got our opposition preview that's coming out today. I'm, I'm going to be talking to Lee Ryder of the Chronicle. Um, we've got tons of, of, on there. Obviously, before the after the Newcastle game, we have the final word and the instant match reaction as well. If you guys want to watch and or listen to those, do head on over to Red Men Plus. And like I say, if you sign up as a club legend, your name will be in the hat to win uh, one of our amazing prizes every single day between now and December. In fact, we're doing the next draw in a ba- again on the on the umbu for the um, for the Newcastle game on the build up show. If you we are giving away rather the Kenny Daglish mug, you know, with the Fergs and Kenny Daglish oh, yeah, five yeah, yeah. goals. Yeah. So if you want to be in the hat, you've got about half an hour to go and sign up to make sure you're in in the hat. I say in the hat, it's actually on an electronic wheel, but <laughs> it's fine. Um guys, thanks so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thank you guys for watching all this in our home, and we'll see you all soon. Tell that. Thank you for watching. If you want more from Redmen TV, join Redmen Plus now. You will get exclusive documentaries, interviews, and more pre- and post-match content around Liverpool Football Club. If you are a club legend subscriber, you'll also get a host of perks, as well as getting your name in the credits right next to me here. Content is available in video and podcast form, so if you want more Liverpool on the go, join Redmen Plus now.